Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another lesson. I'm Brett Papa, and today, sorry, stepped on my fuzz cable, and today, <laughs> We are gonna do some killer alternative guitar. This was the first band back in the day. I was like a full 80s metal disgruntled. Like I remember when, when like Nirvana hit the scene and I'm like, oh God, really? Like seriously, this is gonna, this is the, this is the death of metal. And I was like, okay, this whole movement just sucks. But this band came out and I was like, ooh, What's that? And then a couple others started coming out and then all of a sudden I was like, okay, alternative music can be cool too. So, which brings me to my next point. If you have some song requests, click the song request link below. It's in the description box and then that goes to a little folder and then I get to know what everybody wants to learn. So, keep some alternative songs in mind. I do a lot of classic stuff here, but oh, I mean, this is classic now. <laughs> and I've also already done a video on this, but I was like, I'm gonna start redoing some old videos. So if there's some old videos that I've done that you'd like to see a redo on, let me know and I will try to get to those as well. And if this is your first time here, thank you for joining me. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the new videos come out. It's not just songs, it's technique and all sorts of stuff to get you better at guitar as quick as we can. Okay. So, the song's pretty basic for the most part, but I like the rhythmic quality of it. So, I am, and people always ask me what I'm using for tone. This is just a Strat, Lowler, Imperial Low Wind in the humbucker. It's all I'm gonna use today. Going into divided by 13, 915, into a Ren and Cuff Box of War, which is a freaking killer fuzz pedal. I've had it in my, my little cabinet over here forever and just bust it out. I'm like, oh, I have a fuzz that's perfect for this. And it just awesome. I mean, all right, let's get into the song, shall we? All right, so let's learn this first part. It happens like 15 to 37 times, somewhere in there. <laughs> now, it's a really easy pattern and it's done with octaves. If you don't know what octaves are, you're playing the same note, one lower, one higher, right? Now this is synonymous with the 90s. It happens in every song. <laughs> so if you haven't gotten this technique under your belt and you wanna learn some 90s alternative stuff, get it down, cause it's in everything. What you do, and this one especially, we're gonna do some little ninja tricky muting over here with our first finger. Check this out. We're gonna be on the seventh fret of the A and then we're gonna be on the ninth fret of the G, okay? Now, what you want to do is you want to take this flesh of this finger and be able to mute your low E string. Now, why would you want to do that? Because we're going to be pedaling off of this low E. So in between when I'm hitting the open, I'm actually taking my fingers off of this octave. And then when I put it down, right, to play this octave, I'm actually having that finger, the tip of that finger, touch the low E to mute off the low E string. And then that way this part becomes a little bit cleaner because if you don't do that, while it sounds okay clean to just have that low E ringing, once you get the fuzz in there, it becomes, becomes like total spoon hitting mashed potatoes, like just <laughs> So you wanna learn how to mute with this first finger, the low E, okay? So there's a pattern. Now also with this finger or this finger, however you wanna do it, you gotta drape this finger over these other strings. So the first finger kind of covers this low E, drape it over just for, you know, double, double protection. This finger, keep it low and mute out those strings. So when you hit this octave, you're only hearing these two notes, but you're hitting everything. Okay, let me put the fuzz on there because it's awesome. Right, it's not, which is a cool sound. Only when you're playing an E chord. If you try to move that around, it starts to sound bad real quick. So with that in mind, let's do the pattern. Now the pattern goes back and forth between an open E string and the octave part. It goes like this. Okay, 
So what we've done is we start with an open low E, followed by, now mute it with this finger, two octave hits. Okay, so. And then you do that again. Okay, so you got. Okay, now on the third time, you're actually gonna hit the octave three times. You hit it once, give it a little space, and then you hit it twice. Okay, so all together, it starts to sound like. Okay, then you hit the open E again. For the last time, you're gonna hit the octaves, and it's three of those hits on the octave in a row. Okay, so if you put that whole pattern together, you got. Okay, now it's gonna sound like you hit the open E twice after the first time. And in reality, that's true because you end with an open E and then you start the pattern again with another open E string. Okay, so it sounds like that. Now it does that six times clean before you hit the fuzz. Now let me back up. I don't play it with all downstrokes. I'm not like a Metallica downstroke shred picker. So I'm not super proficient with downstrokes. My forearm feels like it's gonna explode after like the third round of doing this. So I do mine all up and downstrokes. Now there's you know a couple upstrokes in a row on one of the parts. But that's another viable option, especially if you have your muting down. It doesn't matter whether you're hitting a downstroke or an upstroke. If you have the muting down effectively, the part's gonna sound the same. Check it out. So if that's a viable option for you too, that's another way to do it. Now this can be like seen as a rhythm thing too. Practice both, right? I don't, I don't wanna sit and practice down strokes all the time, but if you do and you wanna get really good at rhythm, do both. It's great, great practice either way. Okay, so you do that part six times clean and then you add the fuzz pedal and you do that part twice with one little trick at the end, okay? so. Okay, so on that last round where you hit the three in a row, -na -na -na, you hit it twice and then do a slide. Okay, so it goes. Okay, then you're gonna do that part two more times without the slide, just like the beginning, before you go into the next part, which is the octave climb. It's the same exact pattern. You're just moving the octave now. So you move it to the 11th fret and the 13th, and then up to 14 and 16. Okay, so let's do it from the fuzz part. Here we go. Same exact pattern, same exact thing. You just go up to 11 and 13, 14 and 16, okay? Now that gets you into the like iconic, you know, kind of uh, octave little run that it does. And now we got a slide. So remember, you gotta keep the, uh, the two strings, you know, they're a string apart. You gotta keep connectivity. So you get the full sound, right? You wanna hear both notes. 
Okay, so just practice that in the beginning. Remember, keep both those fingers down. Okay, so that part, we're gonna do nine, I'm just gonna use this finger and just keep in mind it's that same spacing the whole time, okay? So you go nine to seven. Okay. Okay, so what I did is I slide nine to seven. Those two open strings give you time to get up to the next part. Okay, so you got. Once you come back to that 11, so you go 11 to 12, and then when you come back to the 11th, you give it a little, a little vibrato on there. All right, so you got. Okay, so. Okay, now that part, you're doing D power chords. Now there's two guitar players in the band, and like I said, there's like a thousand tracks going on. There's actually other octave parts going on when they do this too, but if you're one guy in a band or one gal in a band, this part kind of covers what you want to do. If there's two guitar players in the band, think about this. So this is a D chord. Now, it has a lower note that we play too. So if you're doing this D power chord, you know, usually it would be five, seven, seven, right? But now we're gonna take it up one finger, so it's gonna be five, five, so E and A fifth fret, and then the D and G are gonna be the seventh fret. Okay, so. So it's down, down, up, and then I do a, I do a mute, so it goes. And then the next part's caught on an upstroke. All right, so it's. Up, 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 down, up, back into that part again, right? So you got. And then you do it again. But now you go. And that's when it starts the singing part, okay? So instead of doing, it goes. And instead of hitting this and sliding down, now you hit it and go to 11. All right, so let me play the whole thing in context. So you got. That starts into the verse, and it does this part next time. So it goes. Okay, so you do that first one where you climb up from nine to 11. Okay, and then. Okay, so when you go back up to start that pattern over again, you're hitting this ninth fret, and it does a really quick slide. It's not, it's, okay, so it's, let me do that whole.
Yeah. Okay. So it just modifies a little bit. Those are the parts, right? So to get into that part, it goes. It does this part four times. I don't know if I did it four times or not, but then it goes back to the D with the A. Now, after you do that part again, now it starts on the 11th fret. Now, after you do that twice, that whole part with the D and the A part, it goes to a chorus part, okay? I think I got all these, the amount of times right. I could be wrong, <laughs> but that's how you play the parts. You can count them and make sure you got them right. The actual kind of chorus part goes, now keep in mind if there's two guitar players, one of you should do open chords, like cowboy chords. Right, so the, the chords are D, A, C, G, okay? Now, if you're gonna do this part, the bar chord part, the D and the C chord have that other note in the bass on the low E, so you're barring the low E. So when you play the D chord, again, it's five and five, seven, seven. When you come down to play the C chord, it's three and three, five and five, okay? So the pattern, It's the same pattern I showed you before, you just apply it over two chords. So the first chord would be two down strokes, followed by a mute, right? So you got, and then move up to the chord. So it's up, 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 down, with two mutes after it, so it's. Does that three times. You do that pattern three times. On the fourth time, you do the same thing starting. You go onto the C and do it down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, into the octave part again. Okay, so that chorus. Okay, changes a little bit, right? So you do that first kind of part that we did in the beginning. And now it goes up to 14, right? So. Now back into the normal.
right? It goes into the chorus part again. Now this time it goes into a bridge part, okay? Now the bridge part, let me play it for you. You got. into the crazy solo okay so the bridge part on that last time when you hold the c chord you know where you would normally go back into the verse it hiccups a little bit right so it goes like this it goes okay so and then it goes up to here. Now it's a pretty big jump, right? So. Okay, so you gotta jump all the way back up to the 11th fret. Okay, so that's. Now it does the exact same thing, the same pattern as you do in the beginning, and it does the same slide fret-wise get in, getting into the solo, but then it keeps going higher and higher. So you got... So that last one, you've gone from 9, 11, 14, 17, and then the that gets into the solo. So it's and then you're into the solo. Let's get into that. Okay, it's something like that. I'm not positive. <laughs> I've watched a bunch of live clips. It's never played the same way twice. So I'm gonna give it my best guesstimation. Maybe watch some live clips, see what you think. But I tried to figure out this one note in the middle and I maybe I'm out of frets. Just got no idea what it is. So I'm gonna show you basically like 98% what it is. Okay, same climb, same idea. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, so that last one. And then we got a, a slide in. Now, keep in mind there is like an octave pedal or something like that on here. So it's got a lower octave going at the same time. But you're basically down here about the 19th fret. You bend up a whole step on the 19th fret G string. And then you do a little slide. Now that note right there is also the 19th fret, but it's the B string and it's kind of a reverse bend. So that means you're already up at the note and then you bring it down. Okay, so that's... So that's 19, bring it down. 17, 19, 17. Now we're gonna go again to the 19th fret, this time on the high E, and it's implying a whole step bend, but it doesn't quite get there. It's like in between half and whole, so there you go. Now that part right there is, so that's 17, 19, 19. And then you go 16, 17, 16. And then B17, so you got. Okay, so all together you got. Now this is the note, I don't know what it is. I've heard him go up and do this uh, bend right here. It would be a step and a half bend right here. I don't know if I can get to it. Yep, there's the note right there. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that though. It doesn't sound like a real note bent up like that. It sounds like some sort of like pinch harmonic, something somewhere around there. So I'm not quite sure what he gets to. I got my, sorry, this fuzz is like super noisy, but it sounds awesome. But you know, I kind of just think, you know, you're here, so you got. You can do a little pinch harmonic there on the 17th fret. Now this next note, you're basically just gonna kind of slide into a note. Now remember, there's an octave, so it sounds bigger, right? But if you're gonna do one note and a slide into this next part, it's on the B string and you go up to the 14th fret and you start bending, but it's cut off. Okay, so you got. Okay. Okay, so the next part is a really quick little. Kind of tricky, okay, so we got. So you slide in to the 14th fret and you kind of bend it up. And again, it just kind of cuts off into nowhere into a big fuzzy blur. Lots of stuff going on in the background too, so you don't really hear stuff cut off necessarily. It's just all kind of the, the soup we got going on here. But, and then it goes. Okay, so that's 12, 15, 12, 13. So this is the B string. And then you go to the 13th fret of the G string. Now this next little riff is pretty fast. So you go 11, 13, 11, slide down to nine. And then you hammer on to 11 and tug it down really quick. And then another bend that's really slow. So it goes. Okay, so. And then a slide, and then that's gonna be 13 to 11, and then 11 to nine. All right, so that's. Okay, so that's sliding from 11 to nine, pull off to seven and then you hammer onto nine and pull it down. And then a quick, right, so it's. 
<laughs> if I don't play this whole part right in a row, I always get the time around. There it is. Okay, so after that part. Okay, so that's. So you slide with your third finger, ninth fret to 11th fret. Skip over a string down to the G. Right, so. Half step. D note, 12th fret. A note, 12th fret. Okay, so. Now it carries on, like the, the guitar part keeps going on throughout the song, but when they play it live, they don't usually do the other parts after this. You can hear it in the background, right? The, the solo keeps going and going and going. But if you're a one man show and you're in a band situation, just go back to what it goes into, right? I think it's back into a chorus. So that's basically the solo. Let's do it one more time really slowly. Here we go. Let's get to the outro of the song. All right, so the outro of the song is a double chorus into that kind of a bridge section, and then it goes into kind of a cool new version of the intro. So a double chorus means you just play the chorus twice, right? So you got... Again. Last time. Play the chorus twice, then you play the bridge part, and then you go back into the intro, right? You go. Okay, so you pull that one down. Again. Does that four times. Now there's a lot going on. There's like, if you go and you listen, there's actually a very cool, and this is where I learned this whole song from, an isolated guitar track where you can hear, you know, just the guitars. And you start to notice that there's just a ton of stuff. With each pass, more stuff comes in, right? More guitars, more guitar parts, 
awesome, huge, giant, just bowl of soup, right? But after this, then there's a guitar part that climbs and it's just done really quickly, okay? And this is the outro of the song, so it's. And then it goes. Right, so you're holding, you're climbing up to 12, 14, 17, goes down, D, E, like that. All right, so you got. And that, my friends, boys and girls, wraps up this tutorial. If you like what you saw, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe, click the bell to be notified. And if you want to support the cause and get better at guitar, don't be afraid to check out brettpapa.com. That's how all these pretty videos are possible. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the continued support. We'll catch you next time.